Hi, everybody, and welcome to Training Day. My name is Mihai Petre, and I'm a senior SharePoint consultant. I will be your host today, and I will be talking to you about SharePoint pages, what they are, how they can be categorized, what are their characteristics, and what we can do with them. There are a lot of types of SharePoint pages, and that can be confusing sometimes, but each one has a purpose, and we are going to go through their features and options and hopefully shed some light on what that purpose is. A SharePoint page is a place where user content is displayed. You could think of it as the face and body of SharePoint. When you first access a SharePoint site, what is displayed to you is the homepage. From here, you can click on any of the pages that will be displayed in the quick launch navigation menu and go to a different page. For example, shared documents, this is itself a page where a list of documents is displayed, or the calendar page to see events in your calendar. Same with lists, tasks, and libraries. We will today talk about content pages, and we will also be discussing some special types of pages in SharePoint, as well as covering some options on how we can um, apply versioning, special permissions, and how to share pages. Without further ado, let's get to it. Content pages. Uh, these pages are used to add or to display content in SharePoint. And we can split them into two categories. In classic mode, we have wiki pages, web part pages, publishing pages, and the modern experience comes with site pages. First of all, let's talk about wiki pages. They are the most basic and easiest page to use in SharePoint. They came around in 2010. Wiki pages are also known as content pages, and we can add content to these pages by typing and formatting test, text. Making changes in these pages is very easy. You just have to click on the edit button at the top of the page, and um, the editing uh, options will, will show up at the top of the page which can help you do whatever modifications you want. You can write text directly in it. You can apply a bunch of different text layouts as displayed in the image here. Or you can also insert different web parts and uh, as well as videos and other types of media. I also have an example here that I can show you. For example, this is a wiki page that has a header on top and two columns. There's some text in the top column, in the, in the top header area. And in one of the side columns, we also have inserted one of our short point elements. Moving on to web part pages. These are the oldest types of pages in SharePoint, but they are still present in newer versions. They are composed of fixed placeholders where web parts can be placed and they generally do not accept free text unless it is placed inside a content editor web part. They offer less flexibility than the wiki page, but they do give you some extra templates that you can work with in case you cannot achieve what you want with a wiki page. Uh, these types of pages are um, uh, places that display an aggregation of information from other sources, namely web parts. These web parts can display many different types of data, including lists, other web pages, search results, documents, or even data retrieved from other servers. You can only insert web parts from your SharePoint with this type of page. To also give you an example, this is a web part page that again has a layout applied with a header, a left column, and a body. We have a content editor web part where we can add text. We have a page viewer web part where I have embedded a Wikipedia page and a script editor web part. And if I just click on stop editing here, you will see that some, some code will also be triggered, which says hello to everybody. And then we can see the content. Moving on to publishing pages. Publishing pages have to be activated by first enabling the publishing infrastructure in SharePoint. 
uh, and the majority of the templates offered by publishing pages gravitate around articles. The most used templates are in the form of a combination of text box, some space saved for a, an image, some date, and other common types of field that can be used to populate these web pages. Uh, they are mainly used for journalistic purposes. And uh, the reason why you might want to opt for a publishing page over a wiki page is the level of control that you have uh, in your creation process. So you might want your page to look a certain way, display, display certain information, and you can build these page uh, using the particular fields that were defined at the beginning. Like I said, some text, some images, and they're very well suited for articles and blog posts, generally types of content that is repetitive in nature. Uh, once content is added to a publishing page, it will be uh, indexed by SharePoint, which will make it easier to search for in the future. To give you an example of that, I have a publishing page right here, which looks like a very simple article. We have an image, a title and an article date. Moving on to modern site pages. Uh, modern site pages use modern web parts. Uh, modern web parts are designed to be easier to use, to be faster and to look better. With these modern web parts, there is no need to employ any code. It is also important to note that for security reasons, modern web parts do not allow for the insertion of code like JavaScript. So for example, uh, what I showed you a little bit earlier, the triggering an alert when the page is open is not possible in modern pages. It is also important to note here that classic web parts cannot be used on modern pages and modern web parts cannot be used on classic pages. Additionally, there is not no one-to-one -one mapping of classic pages, classic web parts rather, to modern web parts but modern web parts uh, are generally designed to have similar purposes and come with some improvements. These pages are also mobile ready and they are designed to be responsive and to look great on a large array of devices. Another cool new feature that is present in site pages is the ability to choose and change the layout of the page even after you have added a bunch of web parts into the page. To give you an example here, I have prepared a, a modern site page where I have added some content, some web parts, and I can, if I want to, change the order of these sections and then republish the page. So it offers a large degree of flexibility. Moving on right now, we are going to talk about a special type of page in SharePoint, which is the master page. Uh, this type of page standardizes the behavior and presentation of the left and top navigation elements of SharePoint. It is used to store structure, common elements, and general design of the site. After you implement a design here, every page uh, associated with the master page instantly displays the new look and feel. It inherits this information. This includes site pages, wiki pages, and system pages. Uh, these pages can be edited only using the classic experience. On modern sites, we have no modern page, no master pages. We're gonna move on right now to another type of special page, which is the list or document library page. These pages are, you guessed it, they're used to display information that are stored in lists and document libraries. They are basically web part pages which contain a list view web part that allow you to, allows you to retrieve and modify content stored in a list or document library. They can be edited if needed in the classic experience. However, that functionality is not available using the modern experience. Now we are getting to our final type of special page, which is the system page. These pages are not meant to be editable. They are used to control different, different settings and to customize the look and functionality of SharePoint. They are generally accessible only by site administrators. A few examples of these pages include the site settings page, the site contents, your apps page, and the analytics page. 
Now we're going to talk a little bit about versioning. Versioning is a, a feature that once enabled, it allows you to store, track, and restore different versions of a SharePoint page. When combining versioning with uh, other types of options, such as checkout, this gives you a lot of control on how and when the content that is uh, posted on your website can be available to end users. Use versioning to track history of a version that tells you when uh, some, some page was changed and who changed it. You can restore to a previous version, meaning that you can replace the current version with one of the previous ones, and the restored version suddenly becomes the new one. And you can also just view a history of all the changes that have been made. Also, we have the option to use minor and major versions, as you can see here represented by the two digits. The last digit represents minor version, and the first digit represents a major version. Most organizations use minor versions when files are under development and major versions when certain milestones are reached and when the pages are ready to be published and viewed by a wide audience. Moving on next to permissions. Uh, by default, all sites, lists, and document libraries in a site collection inherit permission settings from the site that is directly above them in the site hierarchy. This means that a page also inherits permissions from a list that contains it. However, it is possible to assign unique permissions to a page, but first you have to break the permissions inheritance, which will then allow you to assign unique permissions and customize them. Something that is related to permissions is also sharing. The pages that are on a SharePoint site are usually available to everyone who has permissions to that site or that page, but you may sometimes want to share specific pages with people who otherwise will not have access to that site or that page. When you share pages, you can decide whether to let people just view them or if they also are, it will be able to edit them. At any point in time, you, will, you can see who a SharePoint page is shared with and you can choose to either stop sharing it or to change their permissions. Thank you all for being here today. I hope we all managed to learn something new. Uh, to cover what we talked about today, we talked a little bit about content pages in classic and modern experiences, wiki pages, publishing, web part pages, and the new modern pages. Um, right now, the trend is moving towards using modern pages with modern web parts as much as possible. However, classic pages uh, still, are, still are available and will continue to be supported in modern sites as well. Pages can also use versioning to track their uh, revision history. They can be granted special permissions if we choose to do so, and they can be shared with users outside of those special permissions. Thank you everybody for joining. We'll have a quick Q&A session right now, and we're looking forward to hear some feedback from you. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you.